What's up, Wealth Builders? Today is episode one of the Wealthy Golf Podcast. I'm bringing out actually good golfers and business people to not only talk business and have a great conversation like the normal podcast, but to also compete on the golf course so you can see who actually is a good golfer. And I thought for this podcast, I might as well get the guy who kind of actually forced me into golf. This guy was one of my first original students back in 2020. He played golf at Notre Dame. This dude has one tournament, so it's not really a fair match because he's been playing his whole life, but him and I are members here at Southern Highlands together, and he's one of the reasons that I am now in love with the game, and you know, I just love his success story. When he first started with me four years ago, he had 10 rentals. He was one of the 10 original students, and now he has 60 rentals, many of them Airbnbs. He's got properties in Maui, and then he's probably the best golfer I know that is also my friend. I got none other than Shane Sigsby. What's up, man? Hey, bud. So we're going to compete today. How many strokes are you going to give me? What do we even play? Seven. I looked it up. And so we're going to try and play at least nine today. Yep. I'll get three and a half. And then we're playing Matt's play. Match play. And then steak dinner for whoever loses. They're covering it. Winner's choice on the restaurant. Winner's choice on the restaurant. Loser pays. Loser pays, of course. Okay. All right. Let's do it. And I know you're not, like, you, you go to real restaurants, too. This ain't like, we're not going to Outback. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was interesting about you is that you're a sports gambler. That's like how you make a living, which is already fascinating. We could talk about, but you weren't flipping houses or anything. You know, you, you already, you had 10 rentals. Now you got 60, but you still don't flip. You know, you just were always about, I'll make my money over here in my business. And I want to buy rentals with it. Yeah. For me, it's, you know, it's kind of like a retirement account. Yeah. You know, they don't, especially with rates where they're at right now. They don't, they don't cash flow a ton, but you know, they've gone up a ton in value. We've paid down a lot of the debt, um, over the last few years. And, you know, I've learned a lot, you know, operating them and then, you know, would never have been possible without being a part of the program. How do you, oh, did I just take a picture? Oh, yeah, I'll just list it up. So with real estate, why did you choose that? I mean, you were a golfer you still are a golfer, but that's what you grew up doing. You get into sports betting and stuff and you know, by the way, you make money in a very different way than most of these like sports pickers. Yours is all based on like analytics and just hedging and yeah, a lot of arbitraging. arbitraging. Yeah, I've always been a math guy I and mean, that's what drew me to sports betting and that's what drew me to real estate too. You know, like I liked being able to to see exactly how the investment would work. You know, you've got rent, you got a mortgage, you got insurance, taxes. Yeah. And be able to mathematically see it rather than you know, investing in some company that you don't know their financials or you don't know exactly how it all works. Yeah, I just, it was from a math perspective, I thought real estate was the best thing for me. Safest. Yeah. God, you're, you're driving by 30 years. Hey, guys, <laughs> peptides. <laughs> peptides and Titleist. Bro, you just hit a three wood off that lie? That was a bomb. If you were doing tournament play, would you ever hit a three wood like that off that? Probably not. Yeah. If I hit this pure, it's going to be long. You have a five wood? No. So what, at TPI, what they said was, they're like, look, I don't think you need a five wood. You really should be hitting woods out of the fairway because if you hit it good, you're never hitting a wood even on a, you know, par five. But sure. we got wind and all this crap today. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, I mean, if you're just over, that's perfect. Yeah. Oh. So what they said at titleist was he goes hey what's your goal and i was like dude i just want to beat like these celebrity golfers like i want to be a bigger celebrity so i can compete in the celebrity thing and people know who i am yeah. and then i want to go beat curry and romo and those guys and so he watches he goes dude let me tell you you got the one thing nobody has he's like ball speed you can't teach it he's like you're hitting it 185 190 he's like you're faster than almost everyone on tour and he's like you just got to learn how to actually play the game <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> He's like, and that's where the hard part gets. He's like, but like what you just said, if you're out driving everyone by 30 yards. Yeah, you're in a big edge. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go high, and we're going to land it just over the bunker to the left, or we're going to let it run down the ridge. Hey, why you got your face so open? Like, it looks crazy to me. So like, we're, landing, we're landing this ball on a super hard down slope. The strip is that way. So everything on this golf course goes to the strip. We're landing it on a significantly huge downslope. So we got to get this ball coming up, coming in from super high. Got to it. try to get it to stop. Got it. 
That is super high. You hit that literally perfectly. That should be pretty good. That should be right where you want it. All right. So for me, what am I doing? I'm getting a 60 probably, right? Oh, you get 60. Yeah. I got to land this right at the front too. Yeah. You got to land it front. I don't have a lot of room. I'm about 30 yards out ish. Yeah. You land it into an upslope, but you do got to land this front of the green. But the key is you got to land it on the green. If you land this short of the green, it won't get there. And it might roll back to me. Correct. Like I do not want to be short. Nice shot. Oh, Let's see if you can get a birdie. Way short. Dang. That's, that's so much good. more uphill than you think. Yep, that mountain. Dang. All right, that's a par. That's a par. So that's a five for a four and a half. You got to make this to win. I got to make this. Yep. He needs a birdie to beat me here. Oh, oh my gosh. How'd that not go in? Golly. <laughs> Dude, that, that touched side. every part of the hole. High side, going good speed. Oh, man. Back to all square. We're all square, baby. So you got two kids, seven-year-old girl, Riley, and a five-year-old boy, Shep. And so how is it balancing real estate, running your business, you know? Yeah, it's tough. everything you're doing. You're, I mean, I mean, really you're, you're you travel a lot too. I mean, you're in Vegas like only half the year. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, my wife helps out a ton with it. You know, if she if it wasn't for her, you know, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah, I mean, she does everything with the kids' school and everything else, and then you know, I'm busy with work. And the one thing I respect about you, and you actually helped me start thinking this way, because you know, before 2020, I was super frugal. You were living it up all the time. I asked you one night, I go, bro, how much of your money do you save? You're like, did I like to live on like? 80%, 90%. And you're like, <laughs> that book, Die With Zero. Was he that's your, my, that's that's your motto. motto. That's you're like, motto. let's just live yeah. it up and die with zero. Yeah. And uh, I remember you'd be going to like nice restaurants and like all these nice hotels. I'm like, dude, how much money do you make? And I was like, dude, I make more than you. How am I like, how do you, like <laughs> you don't care? You're like, nah, dude. And I started to think about it and I was like, man, you know what? I need to start enjoying dinners. Yeah, and you've done that. Yeah. Joined a country club. Joined a country club. I was never a member Bought a house. Bought an expensive a new house. Yeah. Now I'm joining a discovery property because of you. You got me like, mm -hmm. you know. I, I mean, I think there's still a balance between, you know, spending outside of your means versus, you know, you can afford things. You know, and then obviously if business goes bad, you got to scale back on some things too, you know. You sell some stuff, you cut back, and then yeah, you don't make it back. As entrepreneurs, business is always great. No, this last year it sucked. So. That's life. So funny story about this all. One day we were playing with one of the tour guys. I can't remember who it was. It was one of the long hitters, like Tony Fina or something. And they uh, they lasered the top of the mountain right there. Uh -huh. It's 183 yards to the top of the mountain. But you know how like your rangefinder has like a slope feature? Yeah. It was like 183 playing 336. And we bet him if he could carry it or not. He took like 10 balls, couldn't get it over it. So it's 183, but you can't get it over it because of how steep it is. I don't even, dude, I'd be afraid of hitting this thing and it freaking busting my face. The other big bet is uh, they bet, uh, bet a guy that he couldn't make it to the top in eight minutes. Yeah. One of the caddies out here. So I was, I was golfing with Derek Carr, who's been on the podcast, and he was telling me a story about him and Renfro. They had a bet who could get up there the fastest, and they raced literally you and me right now just going up there. Who do you I, think won? The receiver. No, Carr beat him. Really? Yeah. I heard the way to go if you ever get into the bet is to go sideways and then scale it. So that's what happened. He's like, they both went completely different ways. So it's like, not e at that point, it's not even speed. It's yeah. just yeah. who picked the right strategy, which in life is really what matters. You see a lot of people hustling, doing the wrong thing. Then the other guy takes the easy path and different result. Oh. I think the wind's gonna keep it in front, right? Should be short of it, yeah. Shane, how bad did I suck before when I first started? You were awful. I mean, I wouldn't play with you. <laughs> you were, uh, you're real bad. But I mean, it's so you were paying me to coach you, but you wouldn't play golf with me, like even though that's coaching, because it, it was that uh, bad. It's incredible how much better you've gotten. Oh no! What does it take for somebody to be good at golf? Because a lot of people watch and they're like, "Dude, I want to start golfing. It's good for business and." Blah, blah, blah. How would you I get think good? The biggest thing, which unfortunately you need a time machine for, 
is uh, start when you're a kid. Start when you're a kid. You know, starting in adult age. I mean, you got to get lessons. I mean, you got you get lessons all the time. Yeah, yeah. Hire coaches. It's like what we're talking about. If you're going to try to do it on your own with golf, something that's so difficult, there's just no way. But you you just got to put in work. Like anybody. Now look, they're not going to become scratch golfers from zero. No. That's rare. No, but they could become bogey golfers and be like fun to play with. They could become a 10 handicap. A bogey golfer is like fun to play with. Absolutely. Yeah. They're not holding anyone up. No, no. Oh, no. What's wrong? I forgot my head cover. Where? Up there. Really? Yep. All right. Still a bit winded. We got a lot of wind, dude. Hey, one thing I learned at TPI, he was like, look, the pros are just trying to see turf interaction they want to know how the club's going to go through i was like i never thought about that once this whole time but that makes sense it's like this is i gotta really get through it like that really nice. that's right on it Let's see what the wind does way short looks good all right guys so i'm at uh Pretty big disadvantage. I got severe wind at me. I wish I would have done that with the pitch and wedge. Up. Oh. Whoa. My guy's shadow moved while I was hit. Your butt. I'm gonna blame my camera guy. Run the run the tape. Show his show his shadow just moving in my backswing. Alright, I mean I gotta sync this to you don't have to. I got a tough putt. Dude, you're not three putting this. Probably not. <laughs> no way. But hey, listen, you got to get this ball coming up in here. Okay? Yep. Your ball has got to kind of, this is kind of your end point, you know? If your ball ends here, it'll go right down to the pen. That sounds like an easy putt. Super simple, guys. I just yeah, have to like wind it on this right hill, here. and that's it. It's that simple. Oh, get in the hole. Get in the hole. Guys, that's literally as good as it gets. If I ever did play a celebrity tournament, you'll be my caddy? Oh, absolutely. That's what a caddy's for. I would have never done that. I would have been like, maybe hitting where your ball's at. And then missing it all left. Yeah. Incredible putt. All right. You give me a gimme? Yes, yes. Let's go. All right, here we go. You can get out wait for me. All right. I need Shane to three putt. Birdman. Ah. Oh, good par. Burning those edges. That steak dinner is going to be nice. We may do sushi. Maybe we'll do sushi. <laughs> those are the winner chooses the loser pay. You get double screwed. <laughs> we'll do uh, what's the sushi place? Kame. Kame or um, Yui. Yui. There, I like Kame better than Yui. I do too. I think Kame is the best restaurant in Vegas. By the way, the owner of Kame, if you watch this one, you know, he's a fan. He tells me every time I come in, he's like, dude. And then we just started talking about golf. And if and you're interested in uh, sponsoring the Wealthy Way Golf Podcast, we'd love to have your sponsorship. We'll take it. We'll take all <laughs> sponsors right now. Titleist, <laughs> Swag Golf. Look at this, Swag Golf. You know, I, I got this one because buy low, sell high. That's my motto of everything. Arbitrage. That's how you make money. Hey, if you're enjoying this content and you want to go golf with me and spend five hours together, having fun, hitting the course, having lunch, building a relationship and getting consulting on your business, then you can do that. All you got to do is go to wealthygolf.com and you can book a time today. I've made so many great relationships and I've been able to partner with so many people and do some cool things from this exact product. So I would love to see you there. Wealthygolf.com. All right. Strategical. What do you hit off this tip? Bro, I always try to hit a bomb. See, the thing when you hit bombs is people are always impressed regardless of the score. They'll still walk away being like, dude. Wow, that guy dude, bombs it and bombs. And then they'll look at the score and they're like, he shot an 86. That was perfect. There's a reason I'm a, a house flipper and Shane's a rental guy. I like risk. Even though you're a sports better, which kind of like... Trumps the house flipping? Yeah. The riskiest <laughs> thing you could do bet sports. <laughs> Uh-oh. That ball's gone, dude. All right. We're on the hunts. This is never ideal. 
It's not where you want to be hunting for your ball. I don't think it's alive. Good shot, oh. I think. Dude, I will take this all day, boys. Hidden shot behind the tree. All right, so let's have a putting contest. I'm gonna get it out there about a foot and a half out left. And I'm gonna hit it with about 60% pace. Okay. Oh, I kind of pushed it. Too hard. The read was right, I just hit it too hard. What do you think about good, good? Whew. Bro, I think we go for it. I think okay. we... You're one down, so I could see the I could see the reasoning on wanting to putt him. I'm one down and, I mean, for YouTube, you know? All right, this is for the win. All right. Missed oh, it. Oh, no. Whoa. Oh, no. Whew. Ugh, he's still Gummed up one. It. Two good iron shots. But I mean, those are far putts too. I mean, they're not. Yeah, but we missed four footers. We did. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the positives. <laughs> hey, look, you know, when you lose money on a real estate deal, I'm always going to find the pot. Well, you know, they raised interest rates. Well, you know, it is what it is. You know what's been getting me lately is uh, insurance. Oh yeah, insurance is down crazy. In, down in the Gulf Coast. Oh, bro, like our apartments, trying to get insurance on them, they've literally 3 x in cost. Yeah, that's what mine have done. Yeah. And that's the hard part, right? When you buy a deal and then years later, something happens like double rates when you want to refi or insurance triples because there's hurricanes. Yep. What do you do? It's not like, it just is what it is. <laughs> All right, 94 yards. Little under the wind still. Um, Who's first? Me. You all drove me by a foot. I got him by a foot, boys. At least it wasn't 30 yards. Hey, hold on. Yeah? Side bet. Okay. This is a perfect opportunity for a side bet. What are we going to do? Bottle of wine at dinner? He just, his dinner's getting costly. <laughs> okay. And the, the, the loser gets to pick the wine and buy it. Okay. And the loser chooses both. Yeah. The loser chooses both. <laughs> My boy Shane is, he's, let me tell you, dude, he's expensive. He would pick a thousand dollar bottle of wine. I've seen him do it. And I've paid, I've split it or paid for it. Oh no. Thin. Is that thin? Get away with it. Oh, you, you gave me a, a very good opportunity. That's about 20 feet. Dude, now the pressure's on. Cause now you feel like there's pressure of like, just don't screw it up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Versus, like, I kind of wish I would have went first now. Make it close, too. Like, don't, like, stuff it. Like, make it where one of us wins by, like, three feet. Make it exciting for the fans. That should be perfect. Oh, man. You got it. Get on it. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, it's spinning. Oh, it's spinning. No way. It's still spinning. Oh, my gosh. We may have a measurement on our hands. Are you on the green? Dude. I landed that right on it. Look at where I landed. Normally, it lands and it goes forward, right? You would think it would have like ended up perfect. But no, it landed and it spun all the way back here. That's ridiculous. Bro, this is going to be a close one. 13. Like 13 and a half. Oh, geez, he's doing it for me. I, did, I was going to do my own. 12. There it is, boys. Wine. So for sure I'm getting wine. You that much I know. Wine. I'm picking. You're picking. But I, I believe you're gonna pick something <laughs> good. Like, you know. We're not gonna drink anything bad. I'm still planning on dinner being free. <laughs> oh, I won't hurt. The wine could be more than dinner. You know what? I gotta take two this whole I'm gonna Do I get a pop here? No. You are lucky that's spun. So I'm further out, so I'm out. Oh, that's not a gimme. Oh, 
That was good speed. That's good. All right, Shane's got to hit this in. This would put us back at even. I could potentially get wine and dinner. The people behind us think that they're going to drive the green somehow, like waiting on us. They must All right, have, here we go. And they're on the ladies' tee. Some lady's going to drive the green. Dead straight. Oh, that ball was hit firm. <laughs> Dude, there was no lipping out on that one. No, that ball was hit firm. It had to go center cup. <laughs> oh, 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 man. All right, good guys were my in uh, one up. Hey, and you know what? For the viewers, because we started on 11, we're just going to play until, like, we feel like stop playing, right? What do you think? Yeah, is that the plan? Well, you know, we said we're going to get at least nine. But, you know, they said it was going to be busy, though. It may be tough. If I'm winning after all 18, it may be tough to get back out. We'll see. Can be just short. But you hit it a little fat. That was not hit well. I was holding the pose, so maybe you wouldn't notice I hit it fat. I could tell you hit it fat. The sound. Yeah. <laughs> That's too much called. Even though I've had a thousand hours, I can tell if somebody hits a fat. Well, I was holding the pose like from like a competitive standpoint, <laughs> thinking that like maybe you wouldn't notice I hit it fat. Come on, dude. This, like, now I don't trust my caddy, dude. Now he's like getting serious about this dinner. <laughs> but like I was gonna I didn't want to say it mid flight and look dumb, but I was like, oh that's short. But I knew you hit it. I brought up the potential of it being short mid flight. You know, I was like, that could be short. Dude. Like no one I laid the sod over it. Hey, you're a gambler though. Like what's the most you've gambled for on the golf course? Mm, maybe like ten K a hole. Ten K a hole. So like right now you'd be up ten K on me. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And still, we're playing for dinner. Hey, man. I mean, it could be a 10K dinner, I guess. I got a seven, because I'm not going to let this guy psych me out. That's perfect. Ryan. That is right on Enyeda. it. And Yeda. Be my first hole in one Go on, on YouTube. One. Oh, dude, that's... Could that be in the hole? That is not in the hole. I have very good vision. You're front fringe. Dang. But 10K a hole, like, what is the nerves like when you're playing 10K a hole? You know, you try to kind of just focus on the shots and not uh, not on the money. It's kind of like when you ask the pros, you know, like, did you think about that eight footer on the last hole that was the difference between sixth place and seventh place? You know, that was a $38,000 putt. There's that same answer. No, I'm just trying to make the putt or I'm just trying to make the chip or they lie. You know, I'm just to make the shot. They lie. I don't know if they're actually thinking about the money. The other thing is, is you can't control what your opponent does, right? You can, you know, hit great shots or, or hit bad shots, but... You can't control what kind of shot they're going to hit. Yeah, you, know, you may execute the shot you want to execute when you're playing for 10K a hole, but if they pull some miraculous shot, there's nothing you can do. Well, you know what's crazy is, like, golf is the only sport where you can't really impact your opponent. You just tried to impact me, you know, by, like, tricking me. Like, oh, dude, I hit that so clean and yada, yada, yada. But you kind of did, actually, because my six might have been good. But nonetheless... um, you can't, I can't play defense on you. I'm not pitching against you. I'm not, I can't steal your ball out of a good shot. It's weird that golf is like the only sport that's not competing that way. Hey, would you, would you putt this or chip it? I'd putt that. I had too much fairway to go through, but I, you got it last. I think I'd putt that. Perfect speed. I gave it to you. That was a generous gimme. That was generous. That was very generous. Man, you got a ways to go. This could tie it. Should. See, this isn't etiquette to stand in front of you, right? But this, yeah, this could, is poor etiquette, what you're doing right now. This could be de defense, though, to try and psych you out that I'm just here. Right edge. Gosh, this guy's got ice all right one up one to go hey it's not one to go this, this is only hole seven for us okay got it we only played seven holes that's true that is true and we might need more content dude you know these guys want to hear your story the, the podcast viewers got to know how you did it how did yeah how did you get into sports betting i actually want to know that so i was a trader coming out of college i graduated from notre dame with a finance degree and was a trader in Chicago on the, the board options exchange. Yeah. Then I lost my job in 09. And uh, at the time, I was playing poker as a hobby. Okay. 
And um, I traveled around for about a year, just, you know, barely making ends meet as a poker player. And I kind of ended up in the gambling world. I was in poker for a long time, and that landed me in uh, in Vegas. And then I was walking through a sports book one day, and and I, I went up, I was looking at this baseball season, I went up and looked at the board, and I was like, Yankees minus 123, like, how does that work, you know? And the guy's like, well, if you want to win 100 bucks, you got to bet $123. Yeah. I was like, okay. I was like, well, does every book in town have the same line? He's like, no. He's like, everybody's got different lines based on, you know, what kind of action they're getting down and whatnot. And I was like, hmm. I was like, well, do they ever, like, cross each other? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, the Yankees are playing the Reds. Like, does anybody else ever have, like, Yankees plus 130? He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, that happens. And I'm like, wasn't well, there, like, arbitrage there? And he's just like, yeah, he's like, I, I guess so. You know, like I never really thought about it. And so that was kind of my idea back in um, 2017 was when I started of running it like an arbitrage operation, not like uh, I think the Yankees are really good. Yeah. So um, Yankees would be 120. You would then go bet against them when they're 130. Yeah, you would bet like 120 bucks to win 100 bucks on the Yankees. And you'd bet 100 bucks to win 130 bucks on the Reds. If the Yankees won, you'd break even. If the Reds won, you'd win $10. And obviously, that's a very simplified example. Um, but you'd be in a, a no-risk situation. You have no risk. So if you bet a million bucks, you know, you make yeah, 10000 10 grand. Yeah. In yeah. That no, it's a no-risk 10 grand. Exactly. You just have to find a place to put a million. In exactly. Spread. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's kind of the, the concept that I had back in 2017. I didn't know anything about sports. I'm not a fan of any teams. I'm not, I don't know the players or really anything. <laughs> it's literally just math and, and trading it that way. All right, bud. 18. So this is the last hole? No. Bro, I want to hang with you, man. This guy, like, you know, people pay me to do this shape. I know. I'm always Golf, blessed. podcast, and I'm like, he, this guy's like, how do I, can, when is this over? Can I get out of here? It's incredible. Like, can, we, can I get my dinner already or what? I got to beat you still. Well, dude, we're going to keep playing, okay? Originally, we we're going to play 18. And, dude, the weather's gotten better. The weather's gotten a lot the better. The weather's nice. I agree. You can't just leave. And I got to hear more about sports betting because, dude, that's uh, that's a crazy thing. Because most people, they see, like, Vegas Dave and these guys, and they're like, oh, you're a sports better? Oh, dude, you're just a scared. Yeah, it's a lot different. Bookie guy. Yeah. But you're like, no, dude, like, I'm just, it's math. Yeah, yeah. And actually betting, not... Because that's what stock traders do, too. They just look for, like, little... Tiny edges. Edges, and then they, they can't lose. Yeah. It's a rigged system. <laughs> Isn't that what, like, Forex and crypto traders and all them do, too? I think so, yeah. It's all the same. Hey, so why do you, on your drives, you have, like, a very low ball flight. My ball flight's obviously really high. Why is that? I think it's a tack angle. Like, if we both got in a track, man... I bet my attack angle would be down and yours would be up. They actually say you want an up attack angle on your driver. Yeah. I mean, when I hit mine good, it's deep. Bombed. But it's also inconsistent. Where'd it go? I never saw it. I didn't see it either. Did you guys see it? So... 2024, you think it'll be a better year for you business-wise? Way better. We're already, December's already going to be a big month. Really? Oh, do you, people are buying again or what? Do you like your flips? Um, No, not my flips, but like everything we're building now. Yeah. Like, dude, I rebuilt all the back end of everything. The CRM, the sales process, like how a lead comes in. Uh, we're doing the nationwide wholesaling. Dude, we just got a 100K wholesale deal in the partner program. I'd probably go left. I don't, I'm not, by the way, I don't know that I trust you now, but yeah. <laughs> dude, this, you know, dude, there's no way I can go left. This is, this lie is so bad. Well, don't hit a four. If no, you're no. right, you need to hit like a nine, eight, hit an eight. Okay. And listen, you want to aim this ball at the right edge of the fairway. And then the hill is naturally going to bring it left for you. Right. Ball above your feet. Ball's going to want to go left. So aim a little right and it'll just kind of fall left for you. By the way, guys, this is why you get mentors and golf with people. Well, not golf. Do anything with people who are better than you at something. You want to be good at real estate? Get a real estate mentor. You want to be good at golf? Get a golf. Like, I would never know that unless I was playing with you. And now I learned it. And let's see if it actually works. Perfect. Perfect. That was a really tough lie. 
280 slope 293. Okay. So you can aim for the left bunker. the pen, but here's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to aim at the left, left bunker. I'm going to hit a cut, and I'm just going to get it to cut up to that, like, front side of the green. Yeah, for those who don't know, this is, like, a ridiculously hard shot. Oh, dude, you did exactly what you just said. I still have a very difficult shot here. I think this is the right club, though. Yeah. I... Oh, no. I played in it. I got scared. I got scared. All right, somebody's on. We don't know. I think it's him. I'm... I thought I bladed mine, but maybe, maybe. You know what? You may not have had enough club, and you bladed it to get there. It's a, I'll take it. I'll take it. But I thought you were in the sand. Originally. I thought I was. I thought I was quite a bit further left than this ball. But this was my line. I know. That's, I think this is you. I, did either. I, I hit that. Well, that that one that spun out that I almost lost wine on. That wasn't really fair either. That's that me. That is you. That's me, boys. Okay. But I got the dreaded 40-yard bunker shot. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, you landed right in the bunker. This is a hard shot, guys. Like, Okay, walk us through. How do you even approach this? Well, I left the cart about 50 yards away, and I grabbed the wrong club. <laughs> and do you I'm kind of at that point now where I don't want to walk the 50 yards back to get the right club. I got a 60 if you want it. That's the club I have. That's the wrong club. That's the wrong club. This kind of shot, you want to hit with like a 52 degree, this longer 45 yard bunker shot, ton of green to work with. But I'm not going to walk the 112 yards round trip Got to it. get the right club. We're going to hit it with this and we're going to try to kind of explode it. So it's not going to be nipped. It's going to be more of an explosion that lands over the first ridge and then runs up the hill. This is like, is what now we're, we're talking, talking about explosions. I've never heard that. All right, here we go. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to get the club? Let's go back and get that other club. <laughs> oh, we're fine. Dude. So you're button for birdie. I'm button for birdie. Yep, yep. But you get a stroke. And this is going to be pretty extreme right to left, right? Uh, once it hits that hill. Hang on, I don't think so. Hang on a sec. He's going to lie to me. This is right to left. I I know it for a fact. Like, a lot. I think it's pretty straight, bud. No, it's not. There's no way. I think it's kind of like in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's not straight. It's extreme right to left. No, no. I, it's pretty straight. Yeah, I got a right. I got a hey, yard right. Hey, speed-wise, it's uphill. You got the mountain back there. Yeah, I got to pound it. Oh, man. Dang. That kind of went, did that go left to right? It kind of did. <laughs> this is right to left. I know it for a fact. How did that happen? It like... I tried to tell you, it doesn't go that hard left. Gosh. When you don't trust your caddy, I mean, it's hard when your caddy's competing against you, you know? What do you do? He, sho he showed his true colors on 17 when he tried to act like you know, deceive me with this club. You get a stroke, so it's not a must make. I think It'd be it's nice a must to make. make it, but it's not a must. Short, dude. And this is for Brady. Oh, ho, ho. Ooh, I don't know, dude. We might have to see it. We might have to see it. Why did I hit that that firm? Oh, man. That was not what I expected. I wasn't even thinking about the comeback. I was just focused on making it. Ooh. <laughs> this guy's ice. He's still right, up we, one. You're hitting a two iron again. Yeah, I'm hitting a two iron. What should I hit? I think you should hit driver. <laughs> now, of course you think I should. <laughs> This guy, I don't trust this guy, dude. <laughs> I do think I'm gonna hit a three wood though. Okay. <laughs> the real thing I should hit is the three wood or a three iron. That's what I really should hit. 
Oh no, I'm on 18. We are back where we came from. That boat smoked though. It's just fairway, right? Yeah. I'm playing the other hole, but I'm actually gonna be sitting pretty good. Gotta go. That would be short. Okay. But I really like a putt on this shot. What do they call this? The Texas wedge? The Texas wedge, yeah. So this is kind of embarrassing to Texas wedge it, right? It's not, it's the right play. Okay. I like Texas wedging it when you're going downhill. We uh, rolled into the green. I know, didn't deserve it. You didn't deserve it. I uh, I don't like Texas wedging it as much going uphill, but going downhill like this, this is gonna roll like green. What do you think it's going left to right or right to left? So it's gonna go left right in the beginning and then right to left at the end. I think overall, you need to be halfway between that leaf and the pen. And how hard am I hitting it? You know, I mean, you're hitting it 110%, 100%, 110%. So down all, and then uphill. <laughs> all things considered, I'm going through more grass than I am green. Yeah, this is a tough putt. I don't know that he really believed Texas Wedge was better there. No strokes here is a shame. I don't believe him. I'm starting to I'm starting to doubt your sincerity with your <laughs> reads because I felt like I would have probably ended up better with a wedge. Is it uphill? Not really, because once it starts turning left, it starts going downhill. But another thing to think about is no, the next putt doesn't matter. It's either make it or move on. Yeah, I so. gotta, I gotta let it go. Oh, I let it rip, dude. Dang, he's up too, guys. All right, I'm pressing here. I mean, this is how I'm gonna catch up. I get a pop. Okay, so you're two down. Par five. This is my only chance. Two down on a sushi dinner, and now we have a steak dinner that's all square. Good ball. Thank you. Up, dead straight. That's long, dude. Yeah, you're down. I think that's long. Hey, can the second dinner be like Filipino dinner? Sure. Because that's cheap. So it's like a half press. <laughs> okay. In tournament play, would you ever go for this? Yes. Really? But your miss has to be locked. I mean, I've hit this three wood th two times in a row, pure. Well, you've hit it two times in your life. You're, you've been at 100% of the time pure. That's true. I mean, this is probably going in the hole then. We might have a double eagle. Only problem is my hand is greasy. Oh no, gosh. Dude, I might be on the next tee box. Ryan, I may have you. You found it? Maybe. No way. Yep, I got you. Oh boy. No way I can hit this. Why not? What do you do? So like, come from the you could take relief if you wanted, right? With the stroke penalty, yep. And what would relief look like? Two clubs. Just, uh, just be like right here. Yeah. I think you can hit the shot. And what would you do? Swing from the inside. Full swing. Oh yeah. Do you think a 54 is enough? Yep, I do. I got this tree. I mean, either way, I'm I'm all in. Your like, I have thing is, I think you want this ball to be going left. Yeah, because I have a better angle. Mm -hmm. You're out. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. That's not bad. Man, I feel like this could have been avoided if I just didn't go for it. My caddy. Told me to go for it. Yeah. There's been some real questionable decisions. Decisions that I'm like, I don't know. And then he says yes. And then, you know. I think if you had executed the shot a little differently, that could have also helped. Oh, man. This is that four. Wait, hold on. You just oh, played me. Hugged. I know. Oh. You oh, no. You also just told me this is the hardest shot in golf and to not use a 60. And then you just told me to get a 60. Different. I had a lot of green to work with. You have no green to work with. But you got bigger issues. I got a fried egg. Yeah. Oh, man. What club do you use is the least of your worries right now? You don't want to get in front of this. What's the protocol to hit a fried egg, dude? I mean, on this shot, there is no protocol. Like, there's no good that's going to come of this shot. But 
if you had like a, a shorter shot or more green to work with, there's like different things you can do. Uh-huh. But you're just, you're dead here. You're dead. I got to just pray. All right. I've got Jesus. It's all good. Hi, bud. That is actually um, really good for what that was. The one hole I press on, this guy birdies. All right, you're up three in sushi, one in steak. I gotta start playing better. But you have played with the pros and famous people. You got to go to Jordan's exclusive golf club. How was that? Grove 23? Yeah. Incredible. Um, Yeah, Jordan just built it for himself and his friends. And uh, it's a it's a great gambling golf course. There's a lot of risk reward holes, some <laughs> drivable par fours, some shots that you know you either hit it on the green or you hit it in a burn. Uh, stories about Jordan True with how much he gambles. Yeah, yeah, he he, he loves to gamble. You know, and the, the cool thing about Jordan is he'll gamble for you with you for whatever. So one day I was not in his group, but he we, he wanted to have a game with me, and you know he plays everybody pretty big, and and he knew I didn't want to play as big and. He's just like, what do you want to play for? You know, and I was like, I have a thousand bucks. And he's like, all right. He's like, uh, he's like, we'll play for a thousand bucks. You're like, he he doesn't care if he's playing for ten bucks or a hundred bucks. He's still gonna still compete. competitive. You know, and, and honestly, his net worth is just so high too that whether he's playing for a hundred bucks or a hundred thousand bucks, it'd be like me and you playing today for a dollar or a hundred dollars. You know, yeah. it's yeah, it's kind of all the same. But he's just so incredibly competitive. Yeah. But how but, is he as a golfer? Good, really good. He uh, what's his handicap? He's like a three. Okay. Yeah. Um, he he chips it like a tour player. Oh. Legitimate chips it like a tour player. He putts like a scratch. Yep. He doesn't drive it particularly great, like a, a little short, a little sideways. Um, but his chipping, his hands are unbelievable. Mm. So he knows his strengths. Yeah. He can't yep. like driving is driving. You, you hit it as far as you do. It is what it is. Yeah. And so the way he built Grove is kind of interesting. It's Every hole, he hits it about 250, 260. Every hole from 285 to 320 narrows to a little tiny fairway with like bunkers on each side and a creek and a lake. And then where he's hitting it, 250 to 260, Perfect. it's wide open. You know, you said big hitters can't even take advantage. No. Because they're laying up. They're laying up. So, you know, he built the, the course to suit his strengths and he gets the same amount of strokes if, you know, he went and played at another course. And that's kind of his uh, his like secret thing is, and I, I think he kills people at, at Grove. All right, so you get a half. So if I make the holes over, you, yeah, you're gonna have to sink it to. I'm feeling good about this putt. About me making it. I went to my speckled ball. Yeah, I'm feeling that's good. That's been a changer. No chance. Oh, never had a chance. All right, I gotta make this for the win. That was a mystery. Money. That's Money. how you get one back. Back to two and zero. Oh, that's an up and down. That okay, was back big, to two and zero. Oh. So that's like, a big swing. does it go away now, or how's that go? No, it's still on. It's just always on. Yeah, yeah, we're still getting so now it's, steak. it's two double. <laughs> there's two dinners, no matter what. Now, but you've got you got two stroke holes left. I do. So my mountain it's for sale. Bought it for six hundred. It's listed at five point five. So that's going to make me more on one deal than flipping. You know, like because that's net. The, yeah. There, there was no marketing. There was no sales guy. Like I just found the deal, right? Uh huh. Um, and then this deal for Discovery, right? Like I got a great deal on that too. As a seven-figure profit, at least. And I'm just like, man, maybe I should focus on land because I'm pretty good Like when I just look for myself. And you don't got to do a lot of deals at those numbers. I would just look for the next thing I want to buy, selfishly. Yeah. yeah. And it's probably a good deal. Yeah. Okay, so you're dead here, right? Yeah. You got no green to work with. You do have a backstop, but the backstop is left of the hole. The where the shadow is. Exactly. Yeah. So if you go at that point, you can land it into the upslope. It'll still roll through to the backstop. And it's going to come back to like 18 feet. That's as good as you can do from here. Your other option is to go for the hero flop. Bro, for YouTube? For YouTube. To just open this thing up and then this hero flop. 
If you hit that exact swing, I think you could do it. I mean, we're talking for YouTube. Yeah. We have to do it. They don't want to see you playing at AC. No, I'm not going to go play the backstop. No. But now I don't know, because every time you're my caddy, I don't know what game you're playing now. I think you do what you think's best. Your opponent is 25 feet for eagle. Yeah, that's true. So I kind of got to be a hero. You kind of got to be. I don't really have a choice. Like if you make bogey, it doesn't mean anything. No, it doesn't. You're going to lose the hole anyways. Yep. So we're going to be a hero. Because of my opponent's shot, I am flopping this thing. Center cup. No! I got it too good, I think. Oh my gosh, Eagle. You've gotten like an Eagle and two birdies in the last like five holes. And a three putt. And a three putt. You should have had three birdies. <laughs> you should have had three birdies and an Eagle. <laughs> Okay, so what's it take to run a sports betting operation? How many employees you got? I got three. That's it? Only three guys, yep. And you guys will do seven figures a year. We make good money, yeah. <laughs> you can't say that much money they make. <laughs> so majority of the money's made through just arbitrage. Yeah, mainly. And um, we also like partner with some guys that actually do model out sports, and we get down for them for a volume fee. But again, it's not us taking risk. So they would use you to make their bets? Correct. Yep. Got it. Yeah, we yep. charge on volume. And then don't you do some poker stuff too? Yeah, so I also back poker players, put up the capital and provide coaching and management for guys. So you have risk in that. I have risk in that. Yeah, that's risk on. So I take 100% of the downside for 50% of the upside with those guys. So you're just looking at these guys and you're like, all right, dude, this guy's a good player. Yeah, it'd be like someone putting up money for like a flipper, you know, and saying like, hey, I'm going to take put up 100% of the money. If the deal goes south, I'm on the hook for all of it. Yeah. So, you know, if we make money, then we split the, the profits 50-50 and hopefully you find more winners and losers. But poker seems inherently way more risky than a house flip. Mm, if you find the right players, it's not. Well, I guess if you're just playing like a cash game, like what about a big tournament where you could just bust out? Yeah. So tournaments, we do a little bit differently. Um, we take all the risk, but we take 70% of the upside. Because the risk is so much higher. Because the risk is so much higher. Yeah. Um, whereas cash games, it's more 50-50. I mean, if a, if a player is a good poker player and they're playing appropriate sized games, they really shouldn't have losing years. So they may have a losing month, but they never have a losing year. Yeah. It's so, skill. It's skill. I'd yeah. It's a skill-based game. Yeah. All right. This is to get one. Oh, jeez. That was a gift, boys. Keep it close. Keep it close. That's for YouTube. That was a gift for YouTube. What a guy. What a guy. Got to keep it close. Yeah. He knows. It's like the NFL. You know, they say it's rigged. Do you believe that as a sports better? Have you seen things where you're like, dude. Never. You don't think it's rigged? No. Not at all. A lot of people think that. A lot of people think like playoffs, like NBA playoff series, like go to game six and game seven. Maybe it's more like more money. I don't believe any of that. So you think it's all legit, even though the uh, it says, hey, this is entertainment. You seen that stuff? Yeah. We got sushi. Uh, I'm buying the wine. You're buying the sushi. Yep, um, yep. One up for steak. Yeah, who's getting the wine at steak? Closest to the pen. Okay. For the wine. I do still feel like this isn't really fair that, like, I should get to call whether or not I want to take this bet after his shot. Yeah, but this guy's already hit four birdies and, and almost two eagles since then. He's trying to go bet me, like, even. You know, we'll take the bet. Out of pride, I'm a terrible gambler. I have no discipline. Pride, emotion, all of that. You could easily get me to bet me, like, oh, that looks good. Ah, it's curving a little left. I hit nine iron, and I'm short, and you're hitting wedge. I know. Don't, don't play those games with me, dude. I'm going to pound a pitching wedge the same way I pound that gap wedge last swing. Oh, no. Oh, no. I pulled it. Gosh. So all your rentals are in Alabama. Why Alabama? That's where my wife is from. And uh, I started out just buying one house. We were driving down the road. I saw a house listed for $38,000. And I thought I could rent it out for 800 bucks a month. And again, going back to the math, 
the math on that seemed pretty good to me. Um, and then when I bought one, you know how it goes. That turned into two, and the yeah, that turned into a, a quadplex, and that turned into a triplex. And then when I got to ten, that's kind of when I came into the coaching program. Yep. And then you know through your help and and your team's help, ten turned into sixty. There we go. Primarily small multifamily, and all short term rentals. All right, why don't we go good, good, so we have something to play for on the last hole. Okay. Good, well, good. Don't do that. Let me, <laughs> let me at least make it for YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Keep putting it until you make it. Yep, that's what we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to need to. It's going in. All right, if I miss this. The match is over. The match is over. That ain't happening. Gosh. And that is one take. That was a legit <laughs> up and down. All right, so I get one stroke this hole. Was yep. not riding on the line. Final hole. Both wine and a steak dinner. This is a par five. This is the furthest hole in the game. I think it's like 590. Yes. Okay. And it's getting cold. It's getting cold. Sun is done. If I if I hit one good, you gotta go. For I it. got a pretty good advantage. I kind of got to go for it. The air of the Sarah. What's your strategy? I'm probably not going for it. I'm probably gonna lay up uh -huh. and make you make birdie. Well, I can make that bar. Net birdie, net birdie. A net birdie, okay. I don't know though, if I get one out there. All right, well, let's we'll see what you got. Oh, great ball. I am going to try and draw this one because that's what hits bombs. Oh boy. I'm gonna be in the mulch. You know what? That's actually probably better. I'm gonna look on the bright side. That's probably better for me. It forces you to lay up. It forces me to lay up and not do something stupid. That, I'm gonna look at the positives. That was a terrible drive, but it was for the best. Horrible. Why do I keep ending up here? I got a bunch of clubs because I don't even know how I'm gonna play this. Do not go in the other bunker, please. Okay, I'll take it all day. You in the fairway? Yeah. Well, rough. Right before that bunker on the left. So what are you going to hit, a seven? Probably. If we we're playing probabilities, what are you putting our probabilities at at this point? Um, I got to be up at least. You're 65%. Yeah, that's what I said, 60. I think I, I got a 60% chance right now pulling this off. Hey, before you hit this, tell me about your worst deal. What's the most you've lost gambling? In one day. Mm, 400K. Bad day at sports. One day at sports. Yeah. I wanted you to think about that before the shot. Yeah, it's always fun to remember think about that. in a fairy bugger shot. Remember that. 400K. A lot of money. Money. Dang it. That's sure that bunker, eh? Oh, yeah. Right. Perfect. What's the most you've won? In a day? Yeah. In 2019 or 2020, um, DraftKings had a uh, a world sports betting championship, okay? And uh, it was who could make the most money betting on sports at a weekend. Uh -huh. And I won that for $1.18 million. What about non-DraftKings? Like, you know, nothing crazy because, I mean, we kind of have that arbitrage model, you know? So like, We did the same thing with DraftKings. We don't really have uh, big big winning days and big losing days. What, uh, how far? I got 112. Here's what we're thinking here, okay? Do you see the concrete column in the back? The what? The concrete column in the back behind yeah. the green? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to land it on the right edge of that concrete column and, and spin it back down the hill. Go land like totally 12 feet behind the hole. Fold it. Fold it. All right, we're together. This is always like left to right. Right? It could go right to left in the middle. Let me look at it. All right, let's see. So you're going to feel it left right at your feet. But here in this middle section, it'll kind of straighten and go a little left. But overall, I think this goes right. Overall, it goes right. Yeah. Overall, I got you. Man, I don't know. That middle section, it goes right to left. I know. That's what I think. Overall, I'd be pretty straight, dude. 
<laughs> pretty straight. Because here's what's gonna happen is the first like eight feet, it's gonna kick right, okay? And it's gonna kind of kick out into here and then it's gonna go left and then it's gonna straighten at the hole. It's a triple break. So right, right, triple break. Left, right. Okay. For birdie. For birdie, yeah. Okay. But it's gonna triple break even if it's her par. All right. It's quick. Should be pretty good. Oh, Can that should left? be really good. That should be in the hole. Ah! Oh. <laughs> That's how you end it. Dang. Hey, it was good playing with you. There's no steak dinner. You know, <laughs> no it's all wine. good. There's no wine. You can't have wine at a dinner that doesn't exist. And then you are covering wine at sushi. <laughs> So we like broke even on the day. We broke even. So guys, if you like this video, catch the next one. We're out. <laughs>